Hi, I'm Scott Godfrey. I'm a Principal Lecturer in Marketing and Recruitment in the School of Health and Life Sciences at Teesside University. And I'm with my colleague Anne French, who's the Associate Dean for Marketing and Recruitment. And we're going to talk you through our application process, our interview process, and what to expect at interview, and how we make our decisions in terms of making offers. When we go out to colleges, often tutors and applicants as well want to know about our application process. They want to know about how we read personal statements, what do we look for, uh, what happens, do we interview um, and how do we make our decisions. So um, how can we advise applicants what to expect when they come along to uh, a health course or want to apply for a health course at Teesside University? I think it's a really it's it's a really important thing to think about what you would like to do. And again, you know, sometimes um, you have to think about things quite early on about what you would like to do and where you would like to work and what career you would like to have, particularly within a, within a, a you know a range of different uh, health courses. The biggest thing I would say is to read and and to look around the different types of you know careers that are available. You know, don't think about you know if you want to be a nurse. Well. Yeah, that's fine. Is there anything else? You know, if you want to work and you think you'd like to work in theatre, would an ODP role be better for you to really to do some background reading and looking into the variety of different roles that are available, but to come along and, and, and come along to an open day, look at the our university website. Um, all of our courses are on the website and they all talk about um, what give an overview of the course, the entry requirements, and then give you a breakdown of actually what you study whilst you're at university. Um, so have it do some background work, um, look at what's available in terms of the information that we've got, frequently asked questions that we've got on our website. Um, there's a lot of different um, uh, discover, you know, if you're at college, ask about, you know, the opportunity to visit, you know, we have some discover health days. We've got Discover you know, Science Days, all sorts of different things, um, to have, but to attend an open day. To think about writing some questions down about um, having utilising those opportunities to speak to somebody about the different careers and to look at what facilities that they've got available. Yeah, and again, what we again when we go out to speak to colleges and uh, go out to speak to uh, tutors, uh, we always say it's really important to come along to an open day, regardless of which university you're going to apply for, to get a feel for that university, to speak to the staff, to speak to the students, make sure you're comfortable in that, in that university because whether you're studying for three or four years, it's a, quite a long and intense period of, of your life and, and you've got to be comfortable where you're studying. Absolutely, it's got to be a right fit for you. Um, and you know, sometimes you can get that feeling by coming and thinking, looking at the facilities, speaking to the staff, asking those important questions and sometimes it's difficult isn't it to come to an open day and think I don't want to, to ask a question because I don't want anybody to think that I'm daft and I should already know it but and that's why we've enlisted some of our students mm. to be present at open day because they can give a, a really honest account of what it's like to study and what it is like in terms of placements you know often you know within our health courses there's a big question around where do you go on placement and do I have to travel and and the question is the answer is yes you do have yeah. to travel to get that experience you might have to travel to different locations to get that experience but the students will tell you how it is and, and, and what it's like. Yeah that's really important you mentioned travel because mm. all of our courses have uh, a range of different placements um, and again a common question we get asked is where where, do, where are the placements mm. and, and where, what is our catchment area where Absolutely. do the placements span so where, where could where could I be on placement? So you could be in, in a variety of different areas so we have we do have placements in in, in areas like uh, Nathalaton, Beedale, it might be up uh, in terms of Durham, um, we have placements with um, CNTW as a, as a trust, so it might be um, up CNTW? Near, yes, yeah, Cumbria and North Tyneside. Um, so it might be up sort of further north of the patch. And obviously when people come, we look at where they live and we might allocate them to a home trust. But that doesn't mean to say that for all the time they might be in just that one trust because they might be required for their course to have a specific experience mm. and that specific experience might be in another trust in a different area so you might have to travel what happens if i don't drive yeah i mean we do ask people around you know do you do you drive when when you come 
Um, and if you don't drive, um, you know, there is an expectation that you are able to travel within a radius. And, and we, give, we support you in terms of telling you around what's the best route. Um, so what, what train you might need to get, what bus you might need to get, but you might need to travel of around about an hour from where you live. And, and, and you know, that, that's, that's an acceptable um, distance really from, from your home. Okay. And if I'm interested in applying for a, mm. a health course, how do I apply for a, for a, a course at, in, in the School of Health and Life Sciences? Okay. So if, if, so if you have a look at our, our website, it will tell you what intakes that we've got. So some of the courses, we only have one intake a year, which would probably be, might be in a, in a September. Or some courses, for example, nursing, we have two intakes. So we have a September and a January intake. Um, so have a look and, and see what, what intake you're, you're thinking and considering it. And then you need to apply um, through UCAS. Mm. Um, and it's really important to make sure that you fully complete your application form. Because sometimes people think they, they fill in their most recent qualifications. So if they've done a foundation degree or A-levels or an access course, that they focus on the most recent qualification, but they forget about putting in their maths and English and their other qualifications. And for some courses, that's really, really important because, you know, for example, if you think about something like midwifery, we have got so many applications that you might not get shortlisted mm -hmm. because you've not finished filled in your form correctly. Yeah, it's very important. And I, I, you know, we've both been shortlisted recently, and mm -hmm. it's amazing the number of applications we still get where they miss key qualifications off, Absolutely. which are part of our criteria for admission to the course. So if they're not on your application, then the risk is you're not going to be shortlisted, but you may well have that qualification, you've missed it off. Mm. It is important that applicants uh, are filling the application in correctly and fully, isn't it? Absolutely, really, really important because it's your opportunity to say, this is me, these are all the things that I've done, this is my experience, these are my qualifications, and I meet the entry criteria and that's another really important thing to look at what is expected as an entry requirement to come onto the course um, because and, and ch double check that actually you've got all those things in terms of entry and again as part of your application there's the discussion we always have around um, personal statements yeah. and reference how important is the personal statement how important is the reference and do we use them as part of the application phase? Absolutely we do and your personal statement is really important because it's your opportunity to sell yourself to say you know what what have you been doing and why you would really want to um, to be considered um, to be on the course um, and for courses where you've got an enormous amount of applications it's really important because you need to be able to stand out you need to say I've got all the entry criteria and this is why I really want to do and really want to study this course and where I can foresee myself having a career in, in w whichever profession it is. So we read them, absolutely. We look forward to reading them because it's really interesting where people have actually gone and, and got a variety of different experiences. So it's making sure that you stand out from the next person. You've, you've mentioned a key word there, experience. Mm. Now, is experience necessary and do I need to have experience in the field that I'm applying for? It's not always necessary, but, as, but you need to think about, so for example, if you're thinking about something like midwifery, where there is a, a, you know, it's very, very highly competitive. So having somebody apply who has an understanding of what's expected in the role of a midwife, um, who's maybe been having, the, had the opportunity to have some experience, you know, some, maybe some voluntary experience, then that makes you stand out from the next person. However, you, there is transferable experience as well. So, and the, and the other thing to mention is, obviously, you know, due to some of the recent difficulties that we've had over the last two years, it's been very difficult for people to, any people to have voluntary experience. So it doesn't mean to say if you haven't got voluntary experience, you know, there's no way that you're going to get in to be, to be a midwife because that's not true. But it's about if you haven't had that, what experience have you had in life that's transferable to that profession. Yeah, so that could be in a personal life or it could be uh, maybe some voluntary work you've absolutely. done. Absolutely. Or even if you worked in a restaurant or anywhere like that. Yeah, absolutely. So if you had the opportunity to work in a, in a role where you've been something like a team leader or you've had the ability to, um, to have a role where um, you've acquired those type of skills, 
then that's really good and, and can transferable. be really transferable. Absolutely. It's looking at that role and saying, if that is the role that I want to apply for, what have I got in my life that is transferable to that? So it doesn't mean, so, so I wouldn't want anybody to be put off in terms of thinking, actually, now in, at this stage in my life, I would like to do this career, but I haven't had that experience. That wouldn't be right, but it's about looking at what the experience you've got and how you can transfer it into that. Okay, so, so I shortlist and we kind of, we, we definitely look at the, the grades and we look at um, some courses will look at the personal statement at the shortlisting phase and um, other courses look at the personal statement at the interview phase. Yeah. Um, so what about the interview phase? What do I expect if I'm, I'm an applicant, I'm applying for a health course, I've been shortlisted, I've been invited to interview. What, what do I expect? What happens then? Yeah, so, so what, what, what you need to think about um, is around um, particularly the values and, and what, you would, what we would want to see in somebody within, within working within a healthcare profession. So you, we're talking about things about um, um, the NHS values, so thinking around uh, being uh, honest, uh, having integrity, trustworthiness, um, having really good communication skills, interpersonal skills. Um, and so it might be that in that interview, the, as you said, you mentioned about the personal statement. So we might ask you some questions about the personal statement, ask you to expand on that a little bit. You know, particularly if you've put something in that's, that's particularly interesting, that you've had some experience in something, we might ask you to talk a little bit more about that and how you feel that's transferable to actually the course that you, you're applying for. Um, and, and also, um, we might ask you about some particular scenarios. It might be a little bit like, you know, what do you think is, you know, uh, is going on in, the, in this scenario? What would you do? Some general questions um, and general scenarios that just might demonstrate some yeah. of your values. And again, I think uh, it's sometimes difficult to prepare for an interview when you don't know what that interview is going to be. Um, and all of our health courses, if you are shortlisted, you are invited along for an interview. Mm. Now that interview lasts, how long does that last again normally? Usually around 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, so I, and every course, whether that be physiotherapy, chiropractic, occupational therapy, nursing, midwifery, they all have to be interviewed for, the, for that course. Uh, so they get approximately a 30 minute interview mm. and approximately six broad questions per, yes. per interview as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, six broad questions, but I can guarantee the first question will be, why do you want to be, you know, what is it about, you know, why do you want to be a paramedic, yeah. why have you applied for paramedic, why have you applied for nursing, why have you applied to be a chiropractor, yeah. you know, so, so I can guarantee that that will be a question and, and, and obviously, you know, that can, you can, you know, you, you can prepare for that because yeah. you know why you might be passionate about the course that That's you've right, you for. don't know what questions you're going to get, but you guarantee at some point there'll be key questions yes. or uh, uh, an opportunity to discuss maybe what qualities you could bring, yes. um, what you understand about the role, yes. um, what, do, what you understand about the profession. So yes. all of those broad, general questions. You can prepare for those. You can prepare. Absolutely. And that's why it's really important to do that reading around. You know, so, so reading around so you can demonstrate that actually I've read around this profession. I know what it is to be or what the role of the midwife involves. I know what an ODP does. I understand the many faceted roles of an adult nurse. You know, often we hear people say, you know, well, we give out medication and think about those task things. But you know, the, the roles are so varied. Mm. So to demonstrate that you've had, you know, and done some research, had that understanding a little bit about the role and thought about, well, if I was in that role, what qualities have I got to bring to that role? What would make me a good nurse, paramedic? And that's key, isn't it? Because again, when you come along to the interview phase, again, one of the questions we get is, how do we make our decisions? Yeah. Now, our decisions are based on what you said is the, the, the values, the NHS values, the six broad values, which are uh, common across all uh, yeah. health professions. So it's important that applicants look at those NHS mm. values. But equally, how, how do we mark people and make decisions um, on interview performance? Mm. Yeah, and, and one of the points that you've just mentioned, those, those links to those values are on our applicant portal. Right. So if you know you're going to be you're going to be shortlisted for an interview, those links are there. So there are some key things that are on our um, applicant portal that help you 
to prepare for that interview. Um, but yes, yeah. So we mentioned about the around those six core questions. So you can actually, uh, so we have a scoring system, so that we will score um, an applicant's answer and how well they've answered. Um, and for those um, courses which have got very, very uh, high application rates, then obviously we will offer places to people who score very, very highly okay. on that and uh, those top scorers. Um, and that's that's around the limited amount of places that we have available. So we might have, for example, in midwifery, a lot of applications for a small number of, of places. Okay. And the reason we've got a small number of places is really governed by how many placements we have in practice. Um, we work really closely with our partner organisations who actually look at their workforce and what their workforce need is. They tell us how many how many people that they need in their workforce and how therefore how many students we're able to place with them. And then that that governs how many places we have available on the course. And in terms of the interview, what what would I expect from the interview currently? So what would you expect from well, the interview? Would I have to come onto campus? Is it so currently currently it, it's it's an online interview. Um, and obviously previously before um, the, the, the last two years they used to come onto campus uh, but at the moment it is a, it's an online interview um, and that will be reviewed uh, as we move through the next few months into the, the next academic year but th those information, that information about what to expect whether it's an on-campus or online interview will be on our applicant portal. And again some of the anxiety after interview is I haven't heard when yes. will I hear yeah. and um, often you know um, it's a, not a cause con for concern mm. if you haven't heard straight away, is yeah. it? No, absolutely. So that's a really, really good point. For some of our courses, you may not hear you know, so you, un until around March time. Um, and that's because we need to get through the enormous amount of people um, who have, 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 have applied and been shortlisted. So we have to interview an awful lot of people. And we have to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to have their interview before the decision is made. Is it all, that's all on time uh, So that's absolutely. So that's all on time applications. So everybody who's applied before the, um, the deadline for equal consideration for on time applications need to be considered. So for example, for courses like midwifery, um, unless they've scored um, a top score, they may not get here until until March time and that doesn't mean to say they haven't got in that means we need to look at everybody who's applied on time has been given an, uh, an interview and has the opportunity um, to, to, to get a place so we hold what is called a gathered field but again that information is on our applicant portal as well so that expectation is you know it might be that you, you might not hear for adult nursing for example if you passed your interview you might hear straight away because we have a lot of adult nursing placements mm. um, and we've got two cohorts. So we have a September and a January yeah. cohort and we have big numbers of placements. So we need a lot of adult nurses. So you may hear for adult nursing straight away, for other, the, other, other courses, you may not hear until March okay. time. And what happens if I've applied for a course and then suddenly I see that the, the course is closed and no more applications are being considered. Does that mean it's full, but yet I haven't had my interview or been contacted yet? No, it just means that we can't take any more applications for that course. Um, we, we already have got a lot of applications that we need to work our way through from interview. So if, you, if you've applied and your course is closed, um, for example, midwifery often gets closed immediately because we have such a lot of applications, but we've got a lot of people still waiting for interview. Okay. So it doesn't mean to say that you're not going to get an interview. It just means that we don't need any more applications. And is it common practice for us in, at Teesside and in the School of Health and Life Sciences to make unconditional offers? Yes, it is. Yeah, we do make unconditional offers. Um, if people have got their, already got their entry qualifications, so they've met their entry, so they, you know, whether that is they've already got an access course or they've already have got their A-levels, then they might have an, an unconditional offer. Yeah, so that's key, isn't it? You, you'd yeah. only ever get an unconditional offer if you meet the entry if you've requirements already, already. Absolutely. If you've met the entry requirement and you have everything in terms of 
those qualifications and those UCAS points to enable you to entry, then you might get a, an unconditional offer, but only if you've got the entry. And again, a lot of the professional the courses that lead to professional registration um, have additional entry requirements, uh, things like um, health checks and uh, disclosure and borrowing checks. Absolutely. Should I be worried about any of that? Well, um, we, uh, as you say, everybody has will, will be uh, get their offer uh, subject to satisfactory work-based risk assessment. So we have to make sure that um, you are able to um, work within the, the the scope of that role. Um, so uh, you know, and it might be that you know people have got um, uh, uh, a, a condition that that you know, may mean that they might need to have a reasonable adjustment. So it doesn't mean to say that you can't uh, undergo the, undertake that course, but it means that you would need to have an occupational health assessment. And then we would look to see whether we can put some adjustments in that are reasonable to allow you to be able to, to, to undertake that course. And in terms of your satisfactory DBS, Again, it might be... So that's like a criminal record? Yes, it is, a criminal record. So it might be that you have something on your DBS that um, you might be worried about. Um, and we would just say, you know, obviously it's really important to declare that. Um, and then we will um, undertake uh, and send you a link um, to complete the DBS process. And if there is something on the DB that comes back and you have got a criminal conviction, it doesn't automatically rule you out, but it means that we need to have a conversation with you and also our partner organisations because it's all about being able to place you within um, an, a hospital trust. Um, so it might mean that we need to have a chat with you and uh, it might be our partner organisation as well. And that gives you the opportunity to, to, to chat about what happened and put something in, in context really. So what were the circumstances around what happened um, uh, you know, that you've declared on your DBS? Yeah, and I suppose that's important because obviously if our partner, or our partner organisations uh, wouldn't employ you because you've got something serious on, on your DBS and we often can't place you in practice, can we? Absolutely, that's really important because what we wouldn't want is for you to go through three years of training and actually then find out that you couldn't get a job because the trust wouldn't employ you. So that's why lots of our conversations are done in partnership. So finally, um, if I've got any questions about my application, about the course, or I've got queries about the interview, what avenues um, of support are available? Yeah, there are lots of avenues for, of support. If there's a question about the application process, then we've got our admissions team that can help talk you through that. Um, there are many opportunities in terms of there are some um, uh, Instagram live chats that you can engage in. You can speak to the admissions tutors because lots of our health courses have an admissions tutor that you could actually speak to. You could direct your questions to course leaders. Um, and there of course are we have the chat function as well. We do have the chat function and that's really important because sometimes um, that can give you an almost you know, a very quick answer to some of your questions. But um, yeah, and we've got also have a variety of other um, things like applicant days or things that you can engage in to get the answer to those questions. And finally, Anne, just a quick thank you for uh, sitting here today and, and answering all the questions in terms of our courses, our applications and the interview process. It's fine, thank you.